In this video, you're going to learn about the Java Streams API, which is a very powerful and elegant way of transforming this code into this code. Now, this doesn't come without any cost because as you touch this new API for the first time, you run into all kinds of nasty errors like this. So in this video, you're going to learn how to work with Java Streams API in the right way by really understanding the API and not by just guessing things around. Now, what is a stream? A stream is an object that references a sequence of other objects, which are all of the same type. You may think that it's similar to a classical collection like a list or a set, but there are actually some important differences that we're going to highlight in this video. The best way to learn is by practicing things out. So here we got a, a brand new project where we got a car object, which is actually a record with a bunch of string fields and an integer. And here we got a list with a couple of objects uh, of that class initialized to different uh, values, right? With different fields here. And we're going to use this list as a source of data for all the operations that we're going to showcase with Streams API. Now we're going to start with a very simple operation that we can uh, apply on a stream, which is a very common operation that is called filtering. Let's say that we want to take this cars list and we want to extract only the cars which have type equals uh, sedan. So only those three ones. And we want to get back the list which contains only those three cars. So we're going to say sedan cars equals to cars our list dot stream and when we call dot stream this will basically return a stream of cars which basically means that it takes all the elements in our list and converts them into a stream now on a stream we can apply the filter operation which takes a predicate as a parameter now if we take a look on the definition of the filter method we can see that it takes a predicate which has a generic type equals to the type of the elements in our stream in this case this generic type t will be replaced with, uh, with a car class and a predicate is basically an interface which has uh, a very simple method here boolean which takes one element of our type and returns true or false depending on the condition that we set uh, on that predicate right we basically need to provide right here lambda which returns true or false depending on uh, the condition that we want to add and this filter method returns a stream of uh, t which has the elements in, in our uh, stream right so of a stream of cars so basically we want to uh, keep all the elements which have um, sedan as a type right so we have to provide right here a lambda which has a single parameter which is our car and then we say car dot type equals sedan now because the filter method returns a stream of cars we got this compile time error which says that we cannot convert the stream of cars to a list of cars because we expect right here a list of cars so we basically need to convert our stream right which is the result of the filter operation to a list. And we do that by calling the toList method. We can also say like that but using the collect method, or we can simplify this using the toList method, which is already on the stream class. Now we're going to get into the collectors functionality in just a couple of moments. So this is how you do a very simple filtering operation on a collection, right? Using streams API. Now, another common function which is used with the stream API is the one that allows us to convert the type of the elements in our stream. So basically, if we want to extract all the makes in our list, all the car makes, right? Which basically means that we want to extract a list of strings from our list of cars. We have to do something like this, cars dot stream and then we need to use the map function now if you take a look on the definition of the map function we can see that it takes as a parameter a mapper function which is basically an interface that takes a parameter of type t and returns a result of type r we can see right here that the parameter is any super type of our car right so if you have like a base class for our car it would qualify to be parameter for this function and it returns a type that is different from t right so r as you can see right here it returns a stream of r so basically we can uh, provide right here in the in the map function lambda which says car and i return car of car dot make and in this case i'm just basically selecting only the makes in our car and the same we have to say to list to convert our stream to a list now if you want to add a different operation which follows the map call for example filter we can see that intellij idea tells us that filter takes a predicate which is a super type of string okay so intellij idea knows that the, the type of the elements have changed and we have to to apply the operations on a new type also if we provide lambda here we can see that in this case the, the e the element is a string is not a car anymore this is a very common operation that we apply when we work with with streams api now let's say that we have the following use case we want to extract in this list of strings both the make and the model of each car so we want to have right here um, 
a, a hybrid list which contains the makes but also the model so for example Audi followed by the model which is a5 followed by Mercedes followed by e-class right so all those strings should be just uh, added in this list right now how do we actually do this one idea would be to make this map return a list of two elements which contain the make and the model right so let's do that let's say list of make and model so now the map returns a list it doesn't return a string anymore now we definitely get this error message which says that we have incompatible types and of course to solve this we can change the return type like so and things get solved but we don't really want that we want to have uh, all the elements in our result list right we don't want to have this imbricate structure so the way we can solve this is by using the flat map function but to use the flat map function we need to convert this list into a stream we can also simplify this instead of a list of we can say stream of and pass our two elements that we want to add in our stream so what flat map actually does is that it flattens out the result list so if for each element you return a stream of two elements it just takes those two elements and places them into the result list removing that imbrication level if you want it's very simple to kind of understand right it's kind of a flatten operation now on the stream object we have a whole bunch of other operations which are very useful for example we have the function count which returns the number of elements that we have in our stream we have the function sorted which sorts all the elements in the stream and returns them as a stream again we can also provide a comparator to be able to compare the elements in a stream we can also remove the duplicates in our stream by using the distinct function we can limit the size of the elements in the stream and a number of other functions that are very uh, useful of course we're not going to go into all of them but we're going to analyze the the most complex ones that we're going to see uh, when working with uh, streams api now we also have other ways of creating streams for example we can use the streams stream dot off and provide here couple of uh, values and this returns basically a stream of integer right let's say integer stream equals stream of now let's say that we want to filter and only keep the even numbers so to do that we just have to say in integer stream dot filter and we pass here a predicate let's say i from integer and we return i modulo 2 and i created those brackets here in this lambda because i want to print out a message that will allow us to see when this code is going to be executed filtering integer let's say this filter method returns another stream let's say filtered integer stream and now let's say that i want to say count and i want to print this out to the standard output now i want to use the debugger to show you the execution order of this code so if we click on the debug button now if we hit f9 to step over right to get to the next breakpoint we can see that it doesn't reach this breakpoint it goes directly to this one and then it reaches the one in the filter operation this happens because the actual execution of all these intermediate transformations that we add on a stream only start to get executed when a terminal operation is being called now what is a terminal operation or a final operation on a stream this is basically an operation that returns a non-stream result so for example count returns a long right so in order to to count all the elements in the stream you have to uh, traverse or traverse the stream and you have to uh, count how many elements you have in there also if you if you use the collect function that we're going to use in a second we can see that it returns r right which is uh, which is a defined type right it is not a stream of something also if you can see that we have all match or any match right which is which is basically a search through through our stream and it returns a boolean right so this is a classical type now generically speaking any function that doesn't return of stream of something is a terminal operation the ones that returns a stream of something of a specific type are going to be executed when a final operation is going to be uh, called we basically say that streams are lazy in terms of their execution workflow so they don't execute right away but only when uh, a terminal or final operation is being uh, invoked we're going to switch gears and talk about a collect functionality the collect functionality is is a very powerful way of uh, materializing the elements in the stream into a well-defined collection so let's say that we want to split the cars in our list into two buckets 
the one that has all the sedan cars and the one that has only the hatchback cars. Now, to do that partitioning, we can also use the filter or other uh, functions, but we want to store those into a map. A map which is from boolean to a list of cars. And when the and for the true key, we want to have here all the cars that uh, have type sedan and for the false key, all the cars which have type hatchback. So we're going to call this partitioned cars. And how do we do this kind of partitioning? Well, we have to say cars.stream and then we can use collect and we don't want collectors to list here. We want to use the partitioning by or collectors partitioning by. Partitioning by is basically a collector because the collect function receives a collector. Now, what is a collector? A collector is basically a class that implements this interface, this collector interface, which has three types here. And essentially what a collector does is to take all the elements in a stream and generate a collection or a map or a well-defined data structure from those elements, depending on how you want to customize them. Those three types um, are the following. So T is basically the type of the input elements, in this case, car. A is an internal type that's being used by the collector to accumulate elements in some sort of container. Usually in all the predefined collectors, this is wildcarded, so we don't have to know because it's kind of an implementation detail on how the collector is implemented. And R is the resulting type. Now, you can implement a collector yourself and use it when you want to call collect on a stream, but we don't want to do this. We want to use a predefined collector because in the Java API, we have some collectors that are very useful for most of the use cases. And partitioning by is one of them. If you take a look on it, we can see that it takes a very simple predicate and it returns a map of boolean as a key and list of t as the value, which is exactly what we want. And the input elements is of course t and as I mentioned previously, this internal type of the accumulator is wildcarded. So we don't have to, to care about it. If we go back to the code, we can add this static import to, to simplify the code. And as a predicate right here, we just have to say car car dot type equals sedan and of course we have to close this and this is pretty much all we need to do collect returns the map right because we provide this partition by collector and that's it if you don't believe me you can just print out the actual result and as you can see we got partition cars we got false which has the two hatchback cars and the true which has all the sedan cars. So that's one way of partitioning data, right? If you have a criteria which can be reducted to true or false, that's a very useful way of doing it. Now, let's say that we want to partition the cars in a more complex way. Let's say that we want to generate a map which has this structure. The key of the first map is basically the car make, actually the car type, right? So the, the map has this structure, let's say type, followed by make and then by engine capacity. So we want to have a map which is keyed of type and each value of that entry is keyed of, is another map basically keyed of car make and the final value is the engine capacity. How do we do this, right? Using our list of cars and the stream API. Well, to do that, we're going to use the group by collector and we're going to call this grouped cars and we're going to say cars.stream dot collect and right here we're going to see group we're going to say grouping by this is a collector in the in this area of more complex collectors because what it does is to take a function which is called classifier and this function takes an element as input and returns a, an element of different type and that type is basically the key of that resulting map but as you can see here this map has as a value a list of cars and we don't want to do this. We want right here to have a map of string to integer. And to do this, we're going to use a different version of the grouping by function, which is an overloaded version, which has the value of this map, a different type, a D type. This complicates a little bit the things because as you can see, we, we have right here a different collector that we need to provide to the grouping by function, a collector that returns our type, right? A map of string to integer. We're going to use a predefined collector here as well. But now let's get back to the code. Let's provide here in the grouping by function, the classifier function, which is a Lambda where we say car dot type, which is actually the element that we want to put into this key of the map, right? We want the type. Now we have to provide the downstream collector to this grouping by collector. And this collector is again, a predefined one, which is called to map. 
to map collector basically returns a map of generified keys and values we have to provide a key and the value that we want to to extract from our car class and it's using hash map uh, by default so basically we have to just say to map and we have to say a lambda for which we want to configure the key of this map so we're going to say car dot car dot model as you can see the intellij idea fails to evaluate this in the first place but as you'll see next it starts to get back into shape so we want the model and as a value we want the engine capacity now because we're only extracting fields we can just uh, use a, a, a method reference here to to extract the model the type and the engine capacity we just have to say car column column model right this is a method reference meaning that it just calls this method get model right which is by default on a record right here we just have to say car engine capacity and car type and it looks much cleaner we can also put it on a single line we can also print this out to see that it actually works let's say grouped cars and as you can see here grouped cars the key is the uh, sedan we have right here the the model and the engine capacity of course you can uh, place here the make I, I initially said here that I, I should place the make so we just have to say make so now everything works as we expect now usually those types of collectors are not so uh, frequently used but depending on the code and the data that you need to manipulate they are very useful to to get around it right now in terms of multi-threading and the way the things get executed when working with streams api initially all the streams are sequential so they execute on a single thread which is the the one where where the collect uh, method is being called so if you go here on the stream and uh, take a look on the method definition we can see this flag parallel false initially set on false now on the stream class we also have the parallel stream method which is basically similar to the other one except that we have this flag set on true right parallel true now to be able to see this in action we can simply say for which and we can just place here any random print operation and we can run this code in debug mode and right here we can see that currently this is executed on the main thread but if we advance the execution we can see that this code is now executed on a different thread which is part of this fork join pool right as you can see we got also other threads in this fork join pool which are basically waiting to get tasks so the streams api is using this common pool to schedule tasks and uh, get the execution uh, going in parallel you can model the transformation flow such that uh, you have um, parallel areas and sequential areas because we also have the sequential method which remove this parallelism support from the streams api right so when you call sequential you're going to have uh, all the operations done on a single thread same thing you can have parallel which enables this flag on the fly if we have a sequential stream right so you can switch between those execution modes dynamically on your transformation flow so that was pretty much all about a streams api i really hope you found this video useful thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video